Hello, my 3D printer peeps. I'm sitting next to the Creality High Combo. This is an Ender style multicolor 3D printer that uses the full size CFS, same as the one with the K2 Plus. This machine is similar to the Bamboo A1. However, it is bigger than the Bamboo A1. And unlike the Bamboo A1, this doesn't require a special light version of the CFS. This machine uses the same CFS as the K2 Plus. So if you have a CFS at home, you will now have two CFSs. Let's free it from the box and put it together, together, right now. I don't know about you, but my box was taped as if it was never meant to be opened. Inside the box, you're gonna see this. So unlike other machines that we might just grab the bag and yank it out, you'll see there's a lot of foam and whatnot. So instead, I'm just gonna lie it on its side. I'm gonna reach in here. And slide her out. What you're looking at is the star of the show. The CFS. Please be careful as you throw your foam around inside this piece right here. It's hiding something. Go ahead and work it out. This is your buffer. Here's the crazy part. That's it. That's the high combo. Look how compact the packing is. In there, you see this hole? Stick your finger in it. Pull it out. Be careful. Bag of goodies. Be careful, more goodies. More goodies. Keep going. Right here, work this piece of foam out. There's your high combo. Fingers in here, hook behind. Top of the high combo. Claw right here. Fingernails in the foam. And there's the base and print bed of your high combo. They should probably put a zip tie on it just to keep it in place. Despite what internet trolls will tell you, Creality is tops when it comes to packing. And this is some of the most intense packing I've ever seen on a bed slinger. This thing is not going anywhere. Snip these zip ties. I'd zoom in for a closer look, but if you can't handle this part, just go ahead and box it back up and send it back to Creality. I am going to ask that you cut over the foam rather than over the printer. With the zip ties off, you're gonna wiggle this piece of foam right here. It's gonna come off. And so is your print bed, so be careful. This is the magnetic print service on your heat plate. You need to protect this more than the bed because the bed is replaceable. This, you don't wanna damage this. Go ahead and remove this piece of foam right here. This foam, just kind of folds up like that. And this cable is wrapped around this piece of foam. If you want, you can actually get that off, but you don't have to. You'll see it's hiding a cable right there. Go ahead and work the high. Looks like a piece of pie. Like a pizza pie. <laughs> out of the box. Slide them out. Slide it off, slide it out. Oh my God, we do not even have to install the screen. What a glorious time to be building 3D printers. Next step, this guy. Very important, thumb behind the hot plate, 
slide it forward. Pick this guy up. And slide it in to those slots. I need you to be careful because you'll see there's a wire leading between both sides. We don't want this crushed. Make sure it goes down straight and smooth and nothing pinches it. At this point, you'll see a blue tab on this tape and you can peel that tape off. That'll free up these two wires, one of which will go here and one will go here. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Place the big one first. Place the little one next. Go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. There's only one port on the other side. Go ahead and take four of these screws, the ones with the round head and the included Allen key and put them in the four holes right here. They are a little bit close to the rails. So if you have another tool that works, you might want to consider using it. Creality gave me this fun screwdriver at Earth in 2023. Thank you, Creality. Although what I really wanted was a hotel room. Do the same on the other side. With those screws in place, look right here and find these two screws. One here and one here. If you find one of these screws does not align properly, loosen the other one. That will help. With those screws secured, go ahead and take this main harness. You will see a guide clip right here. Push in and open that clip. Slide the harness into that clip. Continue upward. You will see another clip. Pinch and open. Slide the cable into that clip and close it. You will connect your tool head cable right here. You heard me, not in the tool head itself, right here. Go ahead and slide it in, push it till it clicks. You may want to support it when inserting that cable. However, don't be worried to remove this door. Simply place your finger under the corner and pop it off. You can then depress the clip and remove the cable. Be very careful if you need to do this. I do feel like there's an opportunity to break this. So be careful and try to avoid disconnecting it if you don't need to. To replace the door, it can be a little tricky. Kind of slide it up like this so you don't see the clips and it'll snap into place. In your bag of parts, you'll see two plates like this. They go right here. Tuck this one a little bit more into the hole and lay that one flat. Slide this in and clip it down. Slide this in and clip it down. Your high should now look like this. Go ahead and bring the bed back. Grab your plate and slide it in till it nestles up against the back of the printer. Drop it down and your print bed is installed. One last detail you will see I've turned on the Creality High Light. High Light, aha. Uh -huh. In case you're not sure where I am, I am right here. You will see a little logo on the side of the machine. That logo is supposed to be a camera because this 
is where the Creality High camera is. And you see that little piece of plastic? That's a lens cover. Go ahead and slide that down. You will not be removing the cover. Please avoid rubbing your finger on the lens or you will be very disappointed with your camera performance. If you believe you touched the lens, use a lint-free cloth or a piece of cotton, such as a tank top or t-shirt, and gently clean it. Next up is the screen, which is already installed. You may go ahead and tilt it upward, then peel off the yellow warning label and the protective film underneath. Here you can see evidence that your high printer was tested because there is a Creality fingerprint on it. A little bit of IPA, a lintless towel from the Mart of Wall. Don't forget your screen also folds up. It's time to install our CFS. The Creality High did come with a spool holder. It mounts right here on the top. I'm gonna to go ahead and skip it because I'm gonna focus on using the CFS because that's why you got a high combo to begin with. The first part you need is the buffer. Inside the bag, with these cables, you will find some double-sided tape. It's right here. It's verbatim high bond. This stuff is not to be taken lightly. Once this stuff is applied and allowed to cure, it is not coming off. Peel the yellow side and stick it to the back of your buffer. Do not screw this up. The Creality logo faces up. The four couplers are down. The single coupler is up. Grab the tab and peel off the red. You are gonna get only one shot of this. Line it up and firmly press it into place. Just like any other adhesive, this adhesive will set with time. Give it a little while and this buffer will not be coming off. Creality has included two short and two long PTFE tubes. Go ahead and place one of the short tubes right here in this coupler Simply slide it in, make sure it attaches to the second coupler that's down there. Do you see it? Push it down, you'll feel a slight little pop and you're good to go. Please do not pull test on this. These couplers have very little teeth in them and if you pull hard on it, you will damage those teeth and you are screwed. Here in the hot end, you will see coupler number two, slip the PTFE tube into that coupler and gently push down. You will easily tell it's locked in place. Please do not pull test it. Your setup should look like this. Next up, we are gonna connect the CFS to the high. You'll see the CFS connector right there on the side of the machine. We've got two cables one long, one short. We will connect the short one. It looks like this. One end is straight, one end is hockey stick. Take the hockey stick and plug it in to the back of the buffer. Please note, the sticker asks that you do not hot swapping. Take the other end and connect it to your CFS. Again, do not hot swapping. It should look like this, starting here, ending here. With the buffer attached, go ahead and connect the longer cable to the connector on the side of the high. It should look like this. I'd like to point out, this is a very short connection from the buffer to the CFS. If you have a longer 485 cable, I would go ahead and add it so that you have more flexibility 
to move the CFS a little bit without risking pulling on and breaking your buffer, the cable, or worse, the connection on the CFS. I have a longer 485 cable lying around from one of my CFS or AFS. I'm going to connect it here and I'm going to connect this here. This will give me room to move my CFS around and my printer around while working with my filaments and such and positioning it to fit properly on my workspace. With your entire high combo assembled, there's only one part left. That is the PTFE from the CFS to the buffer. You will find the longest PTFE in your kit and connect those two by plugging one end here into the back of the CFS. You just push it in, it goes a couple of millimeters. It should feel firm, please don't pull on it. Here under the buffer, there are four couplers. Pick one and slide the PTFE tube into that. It should feel firm, please don't pull on it. Your high combo is complete. To open your CFS, you need to slide these two clips back. They will unlock the CFS and you can then pick it up and reclose it by locking the clips. We have fully assembled the Creality High Combo. Catch my next video where we will set up, calibrate and test the High Combo by connecting it to Creality Cloud, Creality Cloud App and Creality Print 6. I'm Greg Adventure and you're on 3D Rundown.